Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. So today we are covering a little bit of everything. We had some more big tournaments over the weekend and we're seeing some interesting decks and techs topping. And of course we have some cards being revealed in the OCG that are causing people to hype up some cards early over here. So guys, before I do get started though, I want to let you know I'm going to be going on vacation for a couple of weeks starting next week. I'm going to be heading down to Los Angeles. I haven't been down there for a couple of years and I have some family down there. Should be really cool. But if you guys have any suggestions for some big locals or anything like that, I'd love to come check it out. So I will be down there the weekend of the 18th and the 25th. So if you guys, you know, that are down there, leave me some info down in the comments for some locals and stuff that I should be checking out. And uh, with that out of the way, let's get started. So kicking off today's episode, we have Psychic and Punisher. This is a fairly new card from Dimension Force. It is a generic level 11 synchro monster with a couple of really useful effects. So first of all, if your life points are less than or equal to your opponents, this card is immune to your opponent's activated effects, so built-in protection. This card has an ignition effect where you can pay a thousand life points and then target one of your monsters and an opponent's card and then banish both of them, so really great generic removal there. And then at the start of the battle phase, if there's a difference between your life points and your opponent's, so not necessarily your opponents being higher this card can gain attack points equal to the difference so this card is really really useful i'm personally running this in my sword soul deck since you can make it with a sword soul token and then either a bishuda or an ashuna but with the punk synchro deck running around i know it's an option there as well with some branded despia players still going into that double masquerade as an opening play if they leave the wrong monster in attack mode right you can get your own life points fairly low go into this card then enter the battle phase, boost this card extremely high, and attack your opponent for game. I think that when this card did first come out, a lot of people thought that it was just going to be too situational, like, it's useful and it's cool, but making a level 11 synchro can be awkward, and it has been awkward for a lot of decks in the past, and as a result, this card was actually quite cheap early on, I think it was hitting a low point of around $10, however, people have recently found that the card is actually really, really good, it's a pretty important monster for those synchro-based strategies to have in your extra deck as an option, so it has bounced back up to now being at the $25 mark. Fortunately, this card, though, is just a one-of, and it's not like a monster that you're going into absolutely every game, and it's not being played by absolutely every deck, so I don't actually suspect that this card's price is going to go up very much further. Rather, I think it will stay pretty steady at around that $20 to $25 mark. The card is brand new, so it's not expected to be reprinted until like the 2023 Megaton, so that's a long ways away. Uh, if you are going to want to play this card over the next year, or at least just have it as an option for your Synchro-based extra deck, I would go ahead and pick up your copy of this card fairly soon. Next up we have Clara and Rushka, the Ventrilla duo. So this is a really, really simple card. It's a Link 1 monster with zero attack points. You can make this card with any normal summoned or set monster, and you can only make it during the main phase too. Now I know that in the past, people used this card as an out to secret village of the spellcasters, since it lets you get a spellcaster monster onto the field so that you can activate spell cards. However, I believe that the card is being hyped a bit now because of the ABC deck. Essentially, this card allows you to normal summon an A, B, or C, and then link it off right away, which lets you trigger its effect. This can help you to unbrick in certain hands, especially if you like hard open with something like a B, it lets you get that search off. Also, notably, if you have a copy of Regulus in your hand as well with the Therion stuff, you can reattach that letter that you now just got into the graveyard to link it off and try to trigger its effect again. I don't think that this card is something that you have to go into like every single game, but it does seem like something that you want to have access to for those potentially awkward opening hands in ABC Therion. Clara and Rushka was only ever printed back in Extreme Force, which I think came out in around 2018, and it never actually got that reprint in the Megatons from that year. So this card has pretty limited availability and is currently going to run you around $7 to $8 a piece. It is pretty limited in its application. I think it's only really good in the one strategy, so it shouldn't go up in price very much more, if at all. However, I would expect the card to be slated for a reprint at some point in the near future, so if you guys do have those extra copies of this card lying around, you can probably dump these now while there's some hype around them and buy them back within the next few months. The next card we're taking a look at is No Punk Foxy Tune. This isn't actually the first time we were talking about this card. We did look at it a few months ago, pretty soon after the release of Grand Creators. Originally, we were seeing the Punk engine being used in Sword Soul with Emergency Teleport to be able to go into Halky Fibrax. 
Now, however, the Punk archetype got a really cool card in Deer Note from Dimension Force, and then they're getting two really good cards, a Field Spell and Synchro, in Power of the Elements, which is the next core set. So the deck is actually starting to look really, really scary. Already now, the cards are starting to see meta play, combined with either the Therions or some generic Synchro cards, and the decks are actually seeing some competitive success as well. The Punk Engine overall is really consistent and able to get multiple bodies out onto the field. It's really, really strong. Foxy Tune is a key piece for the deck that I believe most people are playing at 3. It lets you discard itself and then send another card from your hand or field to the graveyard to special summon any punk monster directly out of your deck. This can be either a Deer Note or one of the level 3 tuners who can then search. From there you have a lot of different really cool plays and it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, because of this card seeing meta usage now though, Foxy Tune has shot up in price considerably. It was only a $7 card a few months ago, but we've now seen them climb up in price steadily over time to where the Ultras are now $30 each, which is kind of crazy. The Collector's Rares also, they've gone up to $90 a piece now as well. Overall, the card is like fairly new, right? And for the same reason that I think the Adventurer stuff is a pretty safe pickup, I don't think that Foxy Tune is going to get either a reprint or a ban list hit anytime soon. If Punk Synchro or Punk Therion is something that you guys are interested in playing, you just might want to pick up your Foxy Tunes now because there is a good chance that they continue their upward trend once they receive that next wave of support coming out in Power of the Elements. Let's move on to some kind of funky stuff now. We'll start off by taking a look at Advanced Dark. So Crystal Beasts are a really popular archetype with a lot of the player base. Sure, they've never been competitive, but the archetype was used in the GX anime and the cards are really cute. So a lot of people want to pick up the deck and at least collect it. Well, in the Animation Chronicle 2022, which is cards that we'll be getting in Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge later this year, we are getting the Advanced Crystal Beast, which basically look like Dark Crystal Beasts. I think they have slightly stronger effects. However, the condition that they all have is that you have to have Advanced Dark on the field. It's not like there's only one printing. Advanced Dark did get a super rare reprint in Shadows and Valhalla, and then a couple of common printings, so the card is definitely accessible if you just want to play the deck for whatever reason. However, just like players want Ulti Sapphire Pegasus and Ulti Topaz Tiger, those same players want Secret Rare Advanced Dark, which is the highest rarity of the card. This original printing came out way back in Return of the Duelist, so quite a few years ago. Initially, this card jumped up to some crazy high price points. I think it was like 75, 80 bucks or something like that. However, it now has cooled back down to a much more reasonable level. We're looking at 40 for the Secret Rare First Eds and 25 for the Unlimited Versions. Now, as much as I like Crystal Beasts and think they're cool, I don't think that this is a card that I would go out of my way to find the max rarity version of. I think that the original Crystal Beasts look much nicer, those kind of fit as a set. I wouldn't go out of my way for Advanced Dark. If you guys do have this card lying around somewhere, I think that the safe play is just to keep this card available in your binder just in case you do find someone who's looking for those original print max rarity cards and is willing to pay up for it. Alright, so this is a pretty cool one. We have Exchange of the Spirit. This is a really old card that used to be banned, but actually received a couple of erratas. Its effect now is that if both players have 15 or more cards in their graveyard, you can pay a thousand life points and then swap each player's graveyard with their deck. This card used to just require you to have 15 cards in the graveyard, but it now also has a once per duel clause attached to it. However, this card is actually being hyped up just because it's being included in the text of some really useful cards over in the OCG. Ishizu's Earth Fairy Monsters got reworks in the Duelists of Pyroxene set, which we should be getting here as a Legendary Duelist set in the future, and the theme is played alongside the Tier Elements deck over there. It helps to get monsters into the graveyard and provides a lot of useful interaction. There's like too much for me to go over here in this video, maybe we'll do that another time. The important thing to note as it relates to this card is that those cards search for Exchange of the Spirit. And then if you have a copy of Exchange of the Spirit in your field or graveyard, you get enhanced effects for those Earth Fairy monsters. So Exchange of the Spirit does have a couple of easily accessible printings. There's a common and gold rare version that are each less than like a dollar, and I'd expect it to be reprinted in the Legendary Duelist set itself when that comes out over here. However, it's the older printings that are quite difficult to find, probably because they're all just really, really old. It was printed in Retro Pack 1 as a secret rare, the cheapest ones right now on TCG Play are like $500, I don't think they've actually moved at that price, but obviously any of those like retro pack secret rares are going to be really expensive. It also has two ultra rare printings, one from Dark Legends and one from a sneak peek over in Elemental Energy. 
There's literally no near mint copies available on TCG Player right now, and the sold listings are kind of all over the place. It doesn't really help that a lot of the copies you find are going to be damaged just because of how old the cards are. I think that for right now, you guys should be okay with just holding on to the commons if you need to. If you happen to have any of those like old holo printings, see what people are willing to pay up for them, and if it seems like a reasonable amount, I would just go ahead and offload them myself. This card seems like a Garnet type of like brick thing, and I'm generally not a fan of owning the max rarity or blinged out versions of cards like this. Moving on, we're going to take a look again at Herald of Orange Light. So this card is pretty simple, it's actually a really old hand trap that has started to see a lot of play within the last couple of years. Its effect is pretty simple, you can discard this card and another fairy monster from your hand to negate an activated monster effect. Now this card first saw play because of the Drytron deck, the deck had access to cards like Union Carrier and Ava, and could search out copies of this card, and you could use it to negate almost any activated monster effect, or discard it to negate with the Herald of Ultimateness or Herald of Perfection. However, when we saw Ava banned and Ben 10 limited, Herald of Orange Light started to decline in price because Drytron wasn't seeing as much success. With Benton back to 2, Drytrons are certainly looking viable once again. The deck has started to see the occasional top the last couple of weekends. We had the Agent deck come out in Ghost from the Past 2 as well, and while they're not a top tier deck, they are a fairy based strategy that a lot of players are fond of and wanting to build, and they certainly appreciate access to another strong hand trap. And then finally, over in the OCG, we just talked about Ishizu's Earth Fairy Monsters seeing play in the tier element strategy. Well, in that deck, they can also run three copies of Herald of Orange Light, since the Earth Fairies can be discarded alongside the Orange Light as well. Definitely a really cool application. However, Orange Light actually has very limited availability in terms of printings. The only real hollow version is the Ultimate Rare printing from OTS Tournament Pack 7, which is about $120 at the moment. It has a few different common and rare printings. I think there's also like a Shatterfoil printing as well. Any of those are gonna cost you between that like five to $10 range. Personally, I think we are finally going to see this get a hollow reprint that is more accessible. I thought it was going to be in Ghost from the Past 2, but it'll probably either be in OTS Tournament Pack 19, which comes out very soon, or in Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge. Just in case, right, if you guys do own a few copies of this card, I would keep a set for yourself to use so that you have access to them, but then offload the rest just in case we do see that reprint soon. Alright, the last card we're taking a look at for today is the Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. This is kind of a weird one, it's a Floodgate Trap card that says that all level 6 or higher special summon monsters on the field cannot attack or activate their effects, so it's basically like a Mystic Mine for level 6 or higher monsters. Now in the current format, this card is actually useful in quite a few different matchups. We have a lot of Synchro and Fusion based decks in the game right now, and those are the matchups where this card is going to be good. This card is mostly just bad against like Ixies and Link decks which we aren't seeing too much of right now. Uh, this card is also really useful against the Therion, so things like Regulus, they can't activate their effects on the field. Take this with a grain of salt though, Farfa actually used this card in his Burning Abyss deck from over the weekend and featured it in his deck profile, and Farfa has a pretty big following, so it's definitely possible that people are just buying into that hype. Remember, this card is still vulnerable to things like Lightning Storm, Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twisters. Is it really like that strong of an option? I don't really know, I haven't like tested it or anything, so you guys let me know if it's all hype, or if it's actually a legit card to be playing. Now this card has pretty limited availability, it's only holo printings are from Raging Battle, but near mint copies are basically impossible to find, the cheapest ult is like $95, the cheapest ultra is like $25. I think that at the time I'm making this video, there's only one or two listings of each card. The card also has an OTS common printing. That version's literally like $13 a piece as well, which is kind of crazy. If you guys happen to have some copies of this card lying around, I would definitely be digging them up and trying to offload them. I personally, not really a big fan of this card, so I'm going to be offloading all of my copies as soon as possible because I think it's just some temporary hype. But of course, you guys should test for yourselves and see what you think about it. Okay guys, that is it for today's episode. This definitely felt like one of the more random all over the place market watches that I've done in the last little while, but that's kind of what's fun about Yu-Gi-Oh! and like paying attention to the market, right? Things are never just simple or all the same. We always see price shifts like this because of some new tech or some deck topping or some new support. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's market watch, please make sure that you let me know by slamming that thumbs up button for me 
Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards that we covered today and what other cards are trending on the market so that I can cover them in a future episode. Also, if you haven't already, do make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.